ideas are very frequently uh, generated by people who <clears throat> are very strange and it's very easy to reject their ideas just by virtue of their strange personalities. <laughs> Where is the bubble coming from? Maybe some people from the universe was coming here in the beginning. There is one man who claims to have been visited by aliens who apparently taught him all the secrets of anti-gravity, perpetual motion and free energy. And so we are told, lest he forget anything, they planted a memory device in his head. I went to the doctor and he says, oh, he says, how the hell is that? Well, I says, it must be an implant. If you have an implant, you have to work according to that implant. The, those three beings are within me automatically. While I'm working, I don't think about my wife, I don't think about the house, I don't think about nothing except my work. David Hamill is a Canadian recluse. He is a brilliant carpenter and metal worker and is currently building his own free energy flying saucer on instructions, he says, from the aliens. Those three beings came from the planet Cladden, the other side of us. There's two. Two planets. Earth, Cladden. And in between, what do you think is there in between? There's the ionosphere. You can't go to it unless you use granite. I wouldn't be surprised the little ship that took off from me is up there in pieces. <laughs> I took pictures of that and I only got six pictures that were good enough. Apparently, David Hamill's prototype had taken off on its own, and according to David, the Canadian Air Force are still looking for it. You can read everything in there. This is the floor with the stairway to go upstairs. <laughs> now. Colon therapy and an advertisement for Robinson's Jam seem to have somehow got mixed up with the design for David's flying saucer. And here, in the center of the Great Pyramid, so David says, is where Saddam Hussein hid from the Americans. That's where Saddam Hussein has hidden all this from. Experiments carried out recently in Finland showed that under certain conditions spinning discs placed one on top of the other can create an anti-gravity field above them and so lift off from the ground. If anti-gravity can be made to work, the mechanism, the, the machinery for doing that would be a source of free energy. So come on in. Inside here. Huh? Now, this cross carries negative and positive. You see it there, the magnet up above and the magnet here. Once placed on top of each other, David explains, the disks are kept apart by reverse magnetism using hundreds of these magnets, each one powerful enough to crush a finger. The magnets are slightly angled, causing the disks to spin. To start off with, you've got to start prior. Prior, when you, you, all these wings are installed, it's a little bamboo stick. You know, you go through your teeth with a toothpick, bamboo made. You just put it there and put the other wing on it. At the right height. And then the other wing, the same thing, three more toothpicks, only three, three toothpicks, because it floats. This is going on top. It's all granite. Just think about it. It's supposed to be all granite. This encave in the granite. So the air passes. So if it is all granite, then the hole you got there is to breathe God's breath, just like you are breathing. 
Well, if it's breathing, the hole that's there goes up at the top of this. It's built upon a stone end. So is David Hamill simply an eccentric, suffering from delusions and dreaming impossible dreams? Maybe. But it is worth noting NASA are currently working on an anti-gravity flying disc that is not at all dissimilar from David Hamill's design. It's high time that ye do recognize what I'm doing is the Lord's work and not foolishness. And if the TV cameras that are taking me in the picture, I hope they take my word for real. For real. Not foolishness. 34. 35. I have the same feeling as I have when I'm looking in the fire. Something links me to the future. Ryder Fintrud is a Norwegian and lives in a small fishing village just outside Oslo. He is not a mechanic, engineer, nor scientist. He is an artist. Did I start to create art? What is art? But as well as being an extraordinarily prolific and creative artist and sculptor, Ryder is also a visionary and a mathematician. When I first start to think about the pebble to motion machine, I thought about the wheel. This wheel is something else. The weight is on the top of the wheel. And from this position, you can start working. I think you have to do something else. You have to do something. And so I start with the pendulums. I look at the wheel and put strings on all over it. So it comes up. When I had a lot of hanging parts, it's come up. Amazing. It was the yin and yang system. And then it started to be so amazing. So I couldn't go to sleep. I had to stay awake and, and make this machine. What was the beginning? What was the meaning with the yin and yang? This is the mathematic symbol for the force, the free force. Ryder Finchwood works 18 hours a day, seven days a week, and his obsessive nature shows clearly in this self-portrait. Ryder genuinely believes that, scaled up, his perpetual motion machine could well form the foundation upon which a new egalitarian society could be built, with everyone receiving free energy. And in fear that there may be those who would wish to suppress such a possibility, he keeps his machine locked away in a vault in the basement of his gallery. But is it perpetual motion? The beauty of Ryder's machine is the harmonious relationship between the ball, the magnets, and the pen.